Last night, Marcus and I flew into Phoenix, drove as far as we could, stopped in a little town out here. Everything was closed. It was Christmas, so we couldn't get our groceries. And uh, I did that this morning, and we're heading out to camp. I drove my truck down here for the elk hunt a few weeks ago, and I just left it. I rented one of these secure storage places and flew back to Montana, flew back here, jumped in our truck, and here we are. Well, this hunt is for coos deer down here in southern Arizona. I lucked out and drew a late rifle tag, which I didn't expect, but uh, Jerry Pritchard and I had this tag three years ago for the, the hunt that is the season before this. And uh, we hunted for five days and we spent probably two, two and a half days driving around trying to find the deer. And we never found them until the afternoon of the third day and it was in here and I feel like there's a lot of benefit of going back to places you've been before because you've already learned something so now I have this tag I got four and a half days to hunt and uh, hopefully the deer are still in here so I can cross off the, the exploring and, and learning part and try to go to school on what I learned when Jerry and I had the tag, or at least that's the theory. And uh, pretty excited to be back here. We saw plenty of deer. We saw a couple really nice bucks. Maybe they'll be out and about. Hopefully the, the water and the concentration of water is similar so that there's a reason for the deer to be in here. Uh, water being a big concentration factor for these deer in the desert, so. Fingers crossed. Hang with us. Me and Marcus and tomorrow, uh, Wade Zarlingo and Scott Jones are joining us. Uh, I think it'll be tomorrow evening. And uh, it's gonna be fun if nothing else. The weather's supposed to be beautiful. It rained here last week and now supposedly the forecast says it's not gonna rain anymore. And we're here doing nothing but chasing deer the last part of December. And I uh, feel lucky to, to get a chance to do this again. Get these tents set up and get up that ridge. Last time, we went and glassed from this big knob up here. You can see in all these drainages, and on this shaded north slope, there's a lot more cover and a lot more vegetation. And they'd go bed in there, and you'd see one stand up, and then disappear. Then you see a different one stand up, they'd disappear. So from right over there, you can really glass into a lot of this stuff. And you can glass this way very well also. So, got about another, I don't know, three quarter mile to go. And we'll be glassing. I can't smell us. She's perfectly upwind. Be gone now. Be gone. Oh no, not that way. I said that way. They're going directly into the wind is what they're doing.
back here to this glassing spot. At least there's a little bit of greenery on these shrubs. Last time I glassed from here, it was such a bad drought. There was really nothing to hide behind. So, you just walk and peek and walk. Kind of make this little corner and look in every hole. Hopefully we see one. Excited. I found a deer out here all by itself and it was goofing off. I'm not sure it was a buck. But now I see it's a doe. Far, far away. Blends in so good. Just eating away. I thought so far is confirmation of how hard it is to see these things in the middle of the day. We walked in, we saw six of them just on our walk in and so far Marcus saw one way up here and I saw one down here and that's it so far of all this sitting in glass and, but I think it's just about to get good here Well, sun went behind the mountain about 10 minutes ago and the temperature change is impressive. <laughs> Not good, but impressive. Kind of bummed. We bumped six deer on the way up here. I saw seven, eight, nine, ten. 12, and you saw three, we saw 15 deer today, and one of them we bumped, Marcus said, was a little buck. I expected better than that, I'll be honest with you. Oh well, figure it out. <laughs> Maybe that's the consequences of multiple multiple years of drought but there's still deer in here there's got to be some bucks you can't have all those I mean I guess you could but very unlikely there's no bucks in here I'm sure there's some around morning was always the, the best glassing time when I was here three years ago so See what the morning tells us. Just kind of looking around, not really doing a lot. Well, I didn't see a buck, but I saw a mountain lion right up there under that rock, just sitting there looking around. It's crazy. I've been on two hunts in Arizona this year, two for two on the mountain lion operation. I probably should have paid attention to what the mountain lion rules are around here. But that's always. It's unique and it's neat. They're really cool animals, very interesting. And uh, funny how they make a living out here. You know, they <laughs> all they get to eat with are claws and fangs. And uh, they're gonna make a living. 
that'd be a tough way to go get dinner. But they do it. But I think I'm probably gonna load up my pack and start easing my way out. And just glass all these little fingers on the way down. See what I can see. Maybe I'll see one. Maybe I won't. But 16, yeah, 16 deer now and one mountain lion. Not a bad day or bad afternoon. No, not bad at all. But I'm going to start packing up. <laughs> Could happen fast, folks. On our way out of here. Maybe we'll see something. You never know. Wonder if this is where one of those mountain lions had dinner here. It's been a while, but I bet it wouldn't take much for a mountain lion to make a meal out of one of those. Oh well. That throws harder than hard. Do you think Blake or think Lucy or think them both? I think both, but I'm, I'm pretty sure Lucy made it. All right, Lucy, we owe you. Blake, thanks for thinking of us and bringing this to the office. Because we didn't have any meat thought out for tonight, so it's Blake and Lucy's chicken and dumplings or chicken and noodles or whatever you want to call it. It looks really good. Well, this morning in the dark, uh, a white rig came driving right past camp here. And there was a road that we came in on. Dead ends right up here. And we were glassing up above that last night, uh, or all day yesterday afternoon. And those guys went up that way, so I think we're going to pivot. Audible, whatever you want to call it. And we're going to go north. Yesterday we went west, and uh, not like we saw a big hank in there or anything. <laughs> Maybe they will. <coughs> Uh, I suspect they're locals who know the area. They probably have a spot that they know of up there and they go hunt up there. So, no biggie. Lots of ground to go. So we're going to go experiment and explore a little bit. seen this before. Got a total of eight deer over here. Marcus found a buck and a doe. And 
He's a cool looking buck on this side. I think he's three over here, but it's hard to tell what he does on this side because it looks like he's got a second main beam or he's got a point that comes off the inside of the main beam. Definitely has a, a cool factor to him. He definitely is one I'd shoot. And some would say, oh, he's not the biggest one around. And, and they mistake me for someone who needs the biggest one around. I need, I'm, I'm a fan of goofy and ugly. This guy's goofy. Oh yeah, look at him go. He's rutting. He is chasing her. Wonder if that plane scared him. I doubt it. Well, <clears throat> we uh we're waiting for those deer over there to bed and we we're gonna make a stock on them that had that goofy looking buck in it. Those doe and her buck. They never bedded, they never bedded. Finally the buck bedded, but the doe wouldn't bed. And, and they stood up and something from over to the northeast spooked them because they ran hard west. I mean, ran in a hurry, so. I don't know if it's a predator. Maybe there's a hunter on the other side of that ridge. <laughs> oh, dang it. Well, <clears throat> it's noon. We've sat here and glassed. I took a little nap. But we saw a really nice buck over here, 1.1 miles straight north and something spooked him and they just, he and his doe just took off running to the west. So we got some serious terrain to get into where they're at or where they went to. Who knows where they even ended up. But total we saw 28 deer this morning and only two bucks for sure. Both good bucks. We need to pick up the buck to doe ratio. But this one over here, he's got something goofy going on with his antlers. If for some reason we were able to relocate him, I'm shooting. Guaranteed. Hopefully I'm killing if I'm shooting. Not sure where they went to. I got a good idea, but 
There's multiple drainages here, and I don't know if they stayed on this side of the divide or this side. And walking up on these things is just about impossible. You gotta, you gotta glass them. I already bumped a little, like, dick deck buck right here, and then another one jumped the fence and took off. I don't know what it was. They are both by themselves. So, I just worry about spooking them. I might sneak down to this knob here where I can glass a little bit. But I'm going to lose some of the visibility from way up here. Well, I came over here to where that deer, or that buck, and his doe had run. There's two hunters glassing over there. We theorized that they walked up that ridge to get to that little knob, and that's probably what spooked those deer. So, I'm gonna go back probably halfway between here and where we were yesterday afternoon, and we're gonna gloss off to the northwest. Yesterday we glossed south. So, see what we find. I don't think we're gonna find this guy though. That would explain why they ran so fast and they might have kept running. Maybe they'll, maybe we'll see them over here where we're going. I don't know. Just take a peek at him. Oh, no, he's getting up, he's getting up. Shut He's running. He's decent. He's pretty good buck. He's heavy. Do you see him? He's to the right. on him if you get a shot. There he is. Down to the right. I got no, I can't tell like any. I see him. Yeah, it's up to you. Going down. It was just a little bit more. We had a buck right here. He was in the brush at just under 250. And then he walked away and he stopped. I had him at about 280, but a couple things going on. One, we'd seen that really nice buck this morning, and he's not. This one here is not close to that one this morning. And uh, I'm sitting in a pile of rocks about this big around in a just terrible shooting situation. So it, um, it didn't work out, but not, not too worried about it. The good news is we were trying to get to that knob over here. That's where we wanted to glass from. But we just stopped and peeked in here. Very often you do that. And they just bed it down there and they look up at you. But they don't give you too much time. We could have made that one work if I could have got in a better shooting position here. That happened fast. Didn't happen with a boom, but happened fast. I got three more days. I just, I'm hoping for a four point 
were on each side. I think that guy was only three. And uh, he wasn't that wide. He had decent math. But last day? Oh, yeah. He better not show up here if I sail him around on the last day. He's getting shot at. And I know what the audience is saying. Newberg, you always say don't pass on the first day that which you would shoot on the last. I know. Do what I say, not what I do. not the one, but we're working our way through them here, folks. Won't be long. One of them will be the one. Big Hank. Hopefully, I'll be able to perform properly. And I can satisfy the promise I made to Marcus that I'm going to get some back straps for dinner. I just didn't say what there. Well, total count today was 35 deer. Uh, probably five bucks, which you'd like a better ratio than that, but it's what it is. And uh, got three more days left. Sun has just went down. Uh, we can see our camp. It's about a little over a mile from here. Looks like Wade and Scott got in. I see his truck and another tent set up. So we'll uh, probably hunt our way back while there's still a little bit of light. Try to get, I guess, down there a ways and do some glassing and looking and maybe we'll see one that we hasn't seen today. It's a lot of fun. It's a lot of work. You know, a lot of people think these little whitetails here in Arizona oh, are just like sitting in a bean field or something. I'm sure there's some people who luck out and they find one right easy. But I've never seen them in real accessible places. We'll see how this goes. I might regret passing that three by three there about two hours ago. About that. What about this big two by two? Right? Oh yeah, there's a great big forky down here. Uh, he's been laying there all day. He's got two does with him. We've been looking at him for an oh, hour, hour and a half. But he's safe. He just he has no eye guards. He just got a great big first whatever you'd call that G two or something point. And then nothing. I guess he put all of his energy into growing that one point and said, I ain't I ain't getting no more points. Seems like he'd be a tough guy to fight though. He'd gouge you with that big long one. Take your eye out or something. If we see some bucks walking around here with their eyeball out, well, then they got in a fight with him. But, oh well. Time to load them up. On our way out of here. It'll be dark and the full moon will be up by the time we get to camp, I'm sure. Get him to see me. 
Marcus talked me out of it. That is absolutely false. <laughs> That's absolutely <laughs> false. <laughs> it was a good day though. Huh? Yeah, saw 35 deer. Nice. Six bucks. A couple one. good ones? One really one? good one. That we uh, hoped we'd catch up to, but uh, that didn't happen. Just couldn't do it. It's a little cheaper here than you think, huh? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely. You, you look at that stuff and you're like, that ah, isn't how it looked from the tent. <laughs> How are you, Wade? How are you? Great. Right. Nice yeah, to see you. You too. Mr. Jones. Hey, ready? Been oh. a couple weeks. Yeah. Oh. With Where were you quail? at? I, there was a bunch of quail here, but I didn't bring my gun because I knew that's what I'd, all I'd do. Is go we were counting quail. on you. Because... <laughs> Wade. That's what we're going to eat for dinner. <laughs> Come on. You brought your... I did not. I did not. I know myself too well, Randy. I would have been. That was what we were hoping the whole for. Time. We ran into quail up on the very top. No, there's quail, and I've never seen it before. They were flying down this canyon, probably 400 yards, coming to roost in these trees right here. Yeah. When we pulled in yesterday afternoon, there were two coveys here, one back here. Yeah. I'm like, where's Wade? Uh, spiced moose meat on tortillas. Or shredded lettuce and cheese. And I don't dare call them tacos because all you purists give me grief about it. So these are Finlander tacos, okay? Is it just Hank Shaw who gives you grief over it? Well, Hank Shaw started giving me grief over it, and now everyone jumped on Hank's wagon there, and so I just call them spiced moose meat on a, on a tortilla with jalapenos. And then you throw a little bit of cheese and lettuce in it and call it a Finlander taco. And the rest of you people just be quiet if you don't like it. Go make your own. Get picked up all the place. Put a shiny light on it, Scott. <laughs> Scott was making Christmas cookies and he made me an antelope cookie because he knows how much I love to hunt antelope. He got the white butt. Two little black horns. He said those were mustaches off a pirate or something. And he broke it off and glued it on there. That's pretty darn good. Thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> My sister-in-law is starting this thing where we go over and decorate cookies. Oh, okay. Yeah, pretty fun, actually. Huh. I never was much of a, much of a cookie guy. but I, I've always been a cookie guy. I know you have. If it's sugar <laughs> and sweet, I'm on it. Yeah. So... We'll probably go up there again. I, I don't know if those guys will be back in there. If they are, we might have the same problem. All right. But if uh, you guys are over there, I got cell service up there. I'll be, hey, stay there. We, we'll be down because it'd be just as quick to walk to you guys as it would be to walk back to yeah, camp. That's true. All yeah, right. we'll do that for sure. I'm going to head to bed, guys. Well, you want to get cold sooner, huh? <laughs> you got enough, well, you got a warm enough sleeping bag? I do. Wade, Wade hooked me up. Yeah, I got two of them, actually. Two sleeping bags? Yeah. Three. Three? <laughs> All right, we'll see you My guys. Gosh. Three in the morning. We'll do, I have think. a good night, Scott. <laughs>